What's going on Legionnaires and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. Now if you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button, hit that notification bell and make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out. And it's the weekend which means it's time for our Indie Comics weekend. And the first comic we're going to be covering is Geiger. Now I know I'm a little bit late to the ball on this one, but it's a good story and it's definitely something that's worth telling. And that might have a lot to do with the creators being Jeff Johns and Gary Frank. The colorist is Brad Anderson, and letterer is Rob Lai. Now this is coming out of Image Comics. So it's a, a little bit of a independent thing for Jeff Johns here. And I have to say, it, it's absolutely phenomenal. I, I love, 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 love this comic. But yeah, with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright guys, so as we jump into issue number one, we're met with two individuals. They're both sitting here in radiation suits, and the Geiger counter is really off the charts at this point. There's so much radiation here, and they let us know that this means it's optimal breeding ground for what they call all the nasties. You know, you have night crawlers out here and what they call organ people. So no, nowhere out here is safe. There's always some kind of group or gang or, or monsters that are out here they are going to try to get you. But this is when they tell us of a story of an individual. About a man who walks outside without a suit. Now after the unknown war, people started seeing him flicker out in the horizon. He was called many things from Joe Glow, the man of mass destruction, the walking bomb, and the meltdown man. And this is when one man tells the other man the story of how it all began, where the meltdown, meltdown man came from. And so this story starts with a man, a man by the name of Tyreek Geiger. And this is when we're taken to the past. And we see a, a fuzzy TV screen letting us know that war has finally begun. Missiles are in the air and everybody needs to seek safety as soon as possible. And this is where we see Tyreek calling to his wife, telling Tracy that she needs to hurry. And they're moving with a purpose. Now this is in Boulder City, Nevada. And luckily Tyreek is one of those individuals who prepared exactly for this situation and he has a bunker. And he's rushing his family out to the bunker. His wife and two children are making their way, but their blasted dog is out there barking at something. Barking at a missile that is flying through the air. And as this missile floats through the sky, looking like a flare, he's still trying to hurry his family inside, having to stop and rush back out to grab his dog. In the midst of grabbing his dog, he takes a gunshot to the leg. And his wife sits at the bunker door and watches this all transpire. And she sees their neighbors, their neighbors walking up the pathway with a rifle in hand. And he's letting Tyreek know that, you know, we're taking this bunker from you. This is our shelter now. And Tyreek shouts to his wife and tells her to close the doors. Close them, lock them, and do not open them for anything else. They say their goodbyes and we see the vault door close. Now with the vault door closed, Tariq is out here left with his dog, and his neighbors are still sitting there, guns drawn down on him. Now the first thing we see here is the dog getting shot. The woman can't handle his barking anymore, and puts a round into the dog. And then the man commands him to open up the door, to figure out, let him know how to get in. And he denies his request, he denies this order, and the man loads his rifle, gets ready to shoot him, and this is when we see a giant bright light and a mushroom cloud covering the sky and in a instant we see everything vaporized a blinding light literally destroying everything and Tariq watches as his hands melt into nothingness and that's when we pick up 20 years later outside of boulder city we have some scavengers out here in radiation suits coming here to look for whatever they can scavenge. Now they've all heard of the monster that lives in Boulder City and that most people stay away from this place. They're assuming that this is all made up, that this is something to just keep people away from the awesome loot that is actually here. 
And so as they make their way into Boulder City, they come across a giant wall. A wall that is meant to definitely keep somebody out. Now these men go up to the door and they do their best efforts of trying to pry it open with crowbars. But their attempts are unsuccessful. And this is when we see a cloaked man standing atop the wall. Not only is he cloaked, but this man is also not wearing a suit. And he lets them know that they're trespassing. He's had garbage collectors come before, and when they trespass on his property, and they don't want to listen, he deals with them, and that's how he ended up with this giant wall of crushed cars. Now these three men, you know, obviously thinking that they're tough, but realizing that this is also the glowing man, or at least one of them believes him to be, but the others don't. And they start opening fire on him, and we see the man jump down. And as quick as he falls, is as quick as he is firing at them. But he's not firing guns, he's firing his fists, he's firing his feet. He is completely laying these guys to waste, and it is not taking any issue for him whatsoever. And as these three sit on the ground, dazed and confused, we see the man in the cloak his eyes begin to glow, and he says he'll let them know. He'll put up a no trespassing sign, a bright neon one, and his eyes are glowing, and we see his body turn into the glowing man, the meltdown man. We see Geiger, and he scares these guys off, and we see him transform back into a normal human. He puts his weapons away and heads back over the wall, not before grabbing all the supplies that they brought with them. And this is when we're met by his two-headed hound, his two-headed wolf. And it seems whatever happened, this nuclear explosion, it caused a, a huge effect on both of them. Him and his dog were transformed into something 10 times more than what they were before. Now Geiger, he's been alone for a long time. It's just been him and his dog. He's read every single book that, that, that's within the city, with, that's in the library. You know, no one's writing anymore. The world has ended. Everything is at a standstill. And so he lives his days, day after day, eating, you know, canned beans with his dog, continuing the same cycle, protecting Boulder City. And he's protecting this city because of his family. Because that vault is still there. His family is still inside that vault, and they have been for 20 years. And he has vowed to guard it with his life until they return, until they are able to come out safely, until the, the nuclear radiation has dissipated. Now this is where we pick up with a new location, and we have one of the individuals that Geiger beat up, and he's sitting here kneeling before someone, before the king. And they have a discussion, and this discussion goes along the lines of someone by the name of Safari Bob claiming to have m once met this individual, and making a pact with him that they would stay out of Boulder City. And they listened, but with supplies becoming so scarce they're having to look everywhere. And he lets the king know that three of the men have encountered someone without wearing a suit, and they can only assume that it must be him. Now this king, he's young, he's fresh. His father is no longer here, and he's having something to prove. And so he tells everybody that they're going to kill him. They're going to kill the myth. And he tells them to gather the nuclear knights, regardless of, of any laws or anything like that. He doesn't care. He wants to prove himself because he wants to show that he has some kind of power. Power in this new world that they live in. Power in Las Vegas. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Personally, I have to say, it was a lot of freaking fun. I, I think it's a great introduction to a whole new world. I love, personally, I love everything post-apocalyptic. You know, there's very few things that I don't enjoy when it comes to that genre. And this is right up that alley. You know, it's just absolutely phenomenal post-apocalyptic, not necessarily super superhero, but super-powered individual, him and his dog, which I think, that, you know, adding the dog in was an absolute great addition, because it is very heart-wrenching in the beginning when, you know, his neighbors just straight up shoot his dog because it's just barking. But all in all, I have to say, you know, Jeff Johns is absolutely killing it. This is a phenomenal series, you know, I really am enjoying seeing individuals like him and Scott Snyder make Noctera, uh, Noctera and, and other comics like that. You know, they're really branching out and being able to 
to have some artistic freedom. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you think of issue number one. What do you think of Geiger as a, as a character so far of what we learned of him? And if you haven't yet, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and until the next breakdown.